you know, we, we try so much to, to chase what they're doing, but I think if we can be real and 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 kind of have some authenticity to us, man, where uh, the students can see that we coming from, we ain't fake. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And for those of you all who have been rocking with us for a little bit, you already know this, but those of you all, this might be your first time. Uh, the premise of this show is to focus on stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And I would encourage you if you're on YouTube and you're streaming to go ahead and hit the like and go ahead and hit subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all the content to best serve and support your student athletes through college and beyond. Now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring in today's guest. And we actually have two today, so I'm excited. And, I, and I've just uh, dubbed this conversation a conversation with coaches because I think this is a conversation we just need to have, a dialogue that, you know, you all are going to be some flies on the walls listening in. But as you hear things that stick out and as you hear things that really resonate with you, be sure to DM the coaches, connect with them on social media, and share and like and post their content because they're out here changing the game day in and day out for these student athletes. All right, y'all got that? Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and bring uh, our first guest uh, to the stage and, and he is none other than Mr. Dwight Coleman and he is the head coach of Dallas Christian College and he is the founder of Feet on Wood. Coach Dwight Coleman, welcome to Beyond the Ball. How we doing, coach? Thanks, Jonathan, thanks for having me. I'm doing well, uh, excited about the opportunity. Excellent. Excellent. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. And now we're going to go ahead and welcome in our, our second guest. And and at, at this point, I, I mean, I, I feel like he's, he's, he's a resident here. You know, he's a resident. He's added value here before. Uh, but we, we had to we had to bring him back. And he is Coach John Mosley. He is the head coach of Elax basketball program. And also you might have seen him on Netflix's documentary, Last Chance You. So welcome once again to the Beyond the Ball podcast, Coach John Mosley. Coach, how we doing? Doing well, man. Doing well. Good to be back. This is easy. I knew exactly what to do to get in, so I'm good. <laughs> I did it before. I did it before. I knew exactly what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. That's it. I mean, when you know what you when you know what you need to do, you just make it happen. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you you just you just make it happen. You make it happen. Yeah. So, uh, with 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 both of you all here today, I mean, the, the first question I was thinking of, and I, I just want to dive in, is just how do you coach this generation in a time like this? And by saying a time like this, I'm just talking about with the pandemic having happened. So basically, coaching from distance. I'll, I'll just start there. How do you coach this generation in a time like this? Coach Mosey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kick it to you first, and I'm going to come to you, Coach Coleman. I see yeah. Coach Mosey. I see him chomping at the bit. Yeah, yeah man. You know what, man? I, I think the, the fact of the matter is to – and me and uh, Dwight, we were having this conversation literally like a few minutes ago. But w there's an authenticity, man, and I think just staying – I think the, the students, student athletes, whoever, and even in the classes that I teach, man, I think – you know, we we try so much to to chase what they're doing, but I think if we can be real and 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 kind of have some authenticity to us, man, where uh, the students can see that we coming from, we ain't fake. You know what I'm saying? Like we we have a heart, a true heart for them. Uh, we have a true heart for seeing change. I mean, we can try a lot, and and I try to stay relevant. You know, I'm getting older. And I, I can't dance no more like I used to. I can't do none of that. And I, in my 20s, I used to be able to dance. I used to be able to do all that. But I think what happens, man, is we, we try so much to focus on that instead of just staying, staying uh, kind of authentic to who we are and what our values are. And I think if we really stay true to that and, and, and really, uh, then I think they'll respect that. And, and I mentioned even before, Jonathan, uh, we, we talked about relationships and I know everybody's using that catchphrase from the show rules without relationship equals rebellion, but having a relationship and understand what's going on in their lives. And they know that you care about them. They know that you, you vested in them and you, you living out the burdens with them. 
uh, that they're going through, then they'll, then they'll, they'll listen as well. But I think being authentic, man, and being myself, you know, I, I'm still a little hip, you know what I'm saying? I'm still a little, I get it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And I, I kind of stayed that in that, and I tried to stay in that lane and started, instead of trying to keep up, even though I said I didn't want to be that, that dad that's got the church socks all the way up to his, his knees with the, I'm wearing shorts with, with the penny loafers, right? I was, I didn't want to be that dad to show up at the basketball games and cheer my son on. Um, but at the same time, I, I kind of give them their space and let them be who they are. And, and at the same time, you're going to respect who I am. This is me then. Well, if coach Mosley want to show up. They, you know, they bag on me because I wear my Sanooks. I got these Sanooks and I love them. And they like Mosley, you make decent money. Won't you go get you some Gucci slippers or something? That's, that's not me. You know, I'm going to wear Sanooks and I got like five pair of them in the summertime. And they like coach, those are ugly. And that's just me, you know? And so if I stay true and authentic to me, then I think they respect that and I let them be. I don't tell them they can't do this, they can't do that. Like, you know, it irritates me. The social media world that they are in, it kind of irritates me. But, it, and for me, I think I, that, that's that been working, man. That's been working, me being authentic. They see that I'm authentic. I allow them to be who they are and authentic. Uh, and at the same time, having the relationships with them and understanding, bearing, living out the burdens of what they're going through. That that's that's been, at least that's been what I've uh, found to work. What's going on, ballers? I hope you're enjoying this episode of Beyond the Ball. And you all know I'm about everything podcasting, right? I want to see people start their podcast. I want to see people grow their authority, and I want people to be able to monetize their podcast. So for that reason, I want to offer you this exclusive opportunity for you to get the podcast monetization secrets playbook for 50% off. All right. 50% off. So all I need you is to shoot me a DM with the money bag emoji to Jonathan Jones speak. Just shoot me the money bag emoji and I'll shoot you the link to where you can get the podcast monetization secrets playbook. Why do you need this playbook? Because it lays out at least 10 plus ways of how you can take a podcast and how you can leverage it to where you can begin to monetize your message. So getting paid to do podcast episodes and generating revenue versus just doing them for fun. All right. So once again, just DM me the emoji of the money bag to at Jonathan Jones speaks on Instagram. I'll shoot you the link to get you your podcast monetization secrets playbook all right coach coleman we're gonna we're gonna kick the rock to you what, what you what you got for us man before i even say anything coach what are some nooks <laughs> hey i don't you know what they call them they like sandals but you put your feet in so your toes are not out right you got them on I, right now I, on I, right I, I don't have them on now oh, okay <laughs> uh but, but i'm gonna I'm have to share them they some nook you got them in. hey you your feet don't down. sweat they cover up <laughs> And you can you can wear you can just you just gotta go get you S A N U K Sanooks and just like I like I've wearing, hey I've been wearing them for like ten years now and, like and, they, and they all played out but I'm gonna hey I'm gonna stay true to what I love what I like that just you. feels good to me I'm not gonna go with the trend I'm gonna go with what feels good to me. I'll you. I'll Coach, I'm gonna get you an endorsement deal. I'm I'm gonna see I'm gonna see if I can broker a deal with Sanooks and <laughs> see what we can make happen. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. For, for me, for me, a lot like Coach says, uh, uh, you just got to be real with who you are. Uh, uh, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I made as a young coach uh, with this year being my first year as a head coach in college, I've been a head coach at the high school level. I'd assisted at college. Um, I was thinking coming in, man, I got to figure out another way to reach my guys. I got to figure out new X's and O's and all this other stuff. And the, uh, as I got into it, the one thing I figured out was that uh, the same thing I tell my guys, basketball is the same no matter where you are, what level you are on. Uh, playing playing a short stint professionally over in Europe, it was the same game. In China, it was the same game. Mexico was the same game. I had a short stint in the G League. It was the exact same game. The same X's and O's, the same uh, fundamentals that I learned in high school and going through college were the same things that carried me through my professional stint. And that's the exact same thing that carries me through my coaching. Uh, and I think when you approach it like that, like coach said, you uh, 
kids automatically understand how authentic you are. And when they think you're coming to them from being real with them, that's when they accept you. Um, the other thing is uh, a book that I love and I always talk about is uh, Leaders Eat Last. And in that book, it's by Simon Sinek. In that book, uh, Simon talks about empathy being the number one characteristic of all successful organizations, whether it be Fortune 500 companies or teams or anything. So, um, you know, uh, in today's day and age, you know, you I get a phone call 30 minutes before practice. Hey, coach, I got a temperature. You know, uh, should I come to practice? And a lot of times, you know, when we were coming up, the thing coaches would say, hey, man, if you're not there, somebody's going for your spot. And I think, in the, uh, you know, in today's time, you got to have that little bit of empathy, still nudge them to understand, hey, if you can't make it, you know, it, it is what it is. But having that empathy to let them know that, hey, I understand this extreme times and extreme measures. So where does the line come from empathy to the place of where it's now we're I don't want to say babying, but <laughs> where does the line draw from empathy to where it's like you need to suck it up and you need to just you need to make you need to make it happen. And, and I mean, maybe it's not them with the temperature, but, you know, some sometimes there, there are some things that that guys can control. And I'm speaking from a place of being a former former student athlete as well. If if you didn't prepare to do your paper or study for a test, practice time is not the time for you to do that. Right. So, so where, 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 where is that line? T talk to me, talk to me. Co Coach Mo, you want it? Coach Cole? Yeah, well, you know, we got this thing, like, you got all this time to go to the restroom, and now when we say, okay, let's start up practice, and then they want to go take a quick one, you know? <laughs> I'm like, no, that ain't, that ain't happening. Uh, I, I, you know what I think, it, what I've learned is, is knowing kind of what's going on in all of the young men's lives to kind of get a feel for and that's where I think the work comes in, uh, you know, because as, as as Coach said, those X's and O's, they're going to stay the same. And all of the jump stops, you know, there's how many ways can you do a jump, jump stop? You know, just jump stop, <laughs> you know, do a chest pass. But I think the, the work comes in, man, with spending time and where you can feel the temperature of each individual. And I think that's where the work comes from, man. You, you Knowing what the family you know, the old school recruiting, man, everything is Twitter and, and social media. And and now we're looking at guys, we're learning about players on ball, you know, ball is life and, and all that versus let me go sit in the home. And I still kind of feel like I, I like to take that approach to just sit in the home. I like to sit in the home approach. You know, I was, we got, we doing some workout today. I, you know, I don't have a problem with going to, I picked up a player today. He's running around here right now. And, you know, it's time building those relationships and kind of getting a feel for, uh, you know, building, getting a feel for them as well and understanding, uh, you know, kind of getting a feel, understanding where, you know, where you can call their bluff or if you know what their authenticity is like. Okay, is this dude being soft right now? Uh, is he looking for... Uh, you know, somebody to coddle him right now, or do I really like? I knew Deshaun. Like I really knew that if Deshaun was in the back crying, that there was a problem. You know, I said there's something catastrophic going on. You know, and so I knew that because I knew the, his character and I knew him that much. And I think building a relationship, you know, you can you can jot down all of these solutions, but how do you really know when to go in and when not to go in? is if you really got a feel and you got a temperature for what's kind of going on in the home life, what's, you know, what, how, what happened throughout their day. And, and sometimes they got to bear those burdens their, themselves. They got to take on those burdens and they got to toughen up. But if you, if you have a little bit of knowledge of that, then you can kind of coach that a little bit. And you can say, you know what? I already know what you went through, bro, but we're not having it today. You know what I'm saying? You're going to already know. And you need to toughen up. And then there are some times where you you know the events that have taken place, and you can kind of get a feel, and you'd be like, you know what, this is this is probably a day he needs me to let him know. I had a young man that you know Tuesday, I can see him, I can see his spirit, and I can see he was a little down because some things weren't going his way. Well, you know what, we got we not I'm not going 
ask for him to get 10 and 10 until, you know, October, November. That's, that's, you know, so I, I probably, so I didn't have to pound on him all summer, all fall. Like right now is probably a time where I'm like, look, man, let me tell you how this is going to live out. You're going to be all right. I had to pat him on the shoulder and say, Hey, you know, this ain't the time to do that. So it, I think it's a feel. And I think a lot of the great leaders, man, they have a, 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 a way to read the temperature of the room. And, and, uh, and I think that's the case, but the, the best way to read it is just having relationships and kind of knowing, uh, and that's where the work comes in. That's where the time comes in. And that's where our wives get celebrated because they understand, okay, this is a time where I, maybe I need to need to spend more time here. Maybe after work, instead of me just running home, you know what, let me just see guys, let me lingering around and hanging around and kind of understand, get a feel for what's going on in their lives. So, uh, that that's kind of what's been what's been, and sometimes it's it's good to ignore them, and I've I've ignored them and seeing if they can work through it, and if they can't work through it, and I see they're not responding to that, then maybe I got to readdress how I respond to them. So sometimes it's us. Sometimes I can take take it and say, you know what, I probably I probably need to uh, revisit how I responded. Maybe there's more to what's going on um, in his in his situation because he didn't respond to my normal way that I treat him or he didn't respond to the tough love. So, you know, I, I kind of always take responsibility for how that person is going to respond. And, and if they don't respond the right way and it's like, okay, I can't always say it's their fault. L let me dig in more to see if, if I can do something else to get them to, to, to respond in the right way. Maybe. And it's, and it's not, of course, John, it ain't always, let me just put them on the shoulder and pat them. <laughs> but it's it's so it, it's it's research, man. I, I like to do a lot of research. You know, I like to study people. Actually, you know, I might want to be a, a psychologist or something. I like to study people as well. So, yeah. Well, well that, is that your job when you're done, Coach? You're done. You going into psychology? Maybe, man. <laughs> well, I, hey, my wife don't. My wife have have issues with me because I'll sit around <laughs> and we'll be out somewhere to eat, and she'll say, "Quit looking at people," and I just. You know, I like to study people as well and, and yeah. see their movement. I like to see people savvy. I'm like, I can look at somebody and tell, kind of figure out what they about. You know, that that's just me. Yeah. That might be wrong. That might be, I don't know. I just sometimes I can I can just see somebody walking and I I just be like, oh, he got it together. You know, yeah. that's that's actually what my wife got her degree in. So uh, hearing you say that reminds me a lot of my wife. She she'll she'll paint a whole picture just by looking at somebody and have a great feel for them. But uh, no, John, to answer your question, uh, similar to coach, uh, the biggest thing is getting to know the player, getting to know what they're going through on a daily basis, knowing their families, knowing their family dimensions, their makeups, uh, their home life. Although a lot of times they're here miles away from home, you still want to know what their home life is like, how many brothers and sisters they have, mom, dad. That way when they come to you with something, you can go back and say, oh, yeah, uh, your, your brother Bill or your mom, how is she doing? You know, something like that. I think that that's always been the, the easiest way for me. Uh, thinking about that, I had a player this year. He went through a really rough patch right before Christmas, Christmas break. Uh, granddad was in a car accident. A couple weeks later, lost him. Um, uh, maybe a week after that funeral, mom was in an accident and he was and she had to be rushed to ICU and. Uh, that was just a really, really hard time for him. And I remember, that, again, we practiced at 5 a.m. in the morning. So I'm getting that phone call at 4 o'clock. And I'm like, man, you just stay home. You stay inside today, figure out, figure that out, and then come on. Then there's another day where he's calling, hey, coach, you know, uh, I'm not feeling like it. I'm like, okay, well, um, you know, usually when I'm not feeling well or something's going on, the gym is my, pl my place to get away. So just reminding him of those things. Um, I also I also like to be really upfront and honest with my guys about a lot of my life experiences from day one. From the time they walk on campus, I tell them who I am. I talk about some of the things that life has, has thrown at me, some of the curveballs that I've, I've thrown at myself. Uh, and and that's that. So when they go through those things as young men, you know, I'm telling them, hey, I remember when I went through the same thing. This is how I got over it. This how this is how I got past it. And a lot of times basketball was that vehicle to kind of help navigate me through some of those things. So I'm, I'm pushing those guys and saying, you know, hey, 
uh, like the old saying goes, use basketball to let basketball use you. Um, I had another kid, Greg, who I ended up leaving at the semester. Um, his family was from Louisiana. They had got displaced uh, during the storms early on and mom was down in Houston and he was up here and um, being a small school like ours, our, we don't offer scholarships. Our guys pay to go to school and he had to make the rough decision. Do I continue my career? Or do I go back home and help out my family? And, uh, you know, I talk, you know, after we talked about it, I told him, you know what you have to do. You know, you, it's the right decision you have to make. And when you're going through those things, uh, as long as kids know that you have their best interests at heart as, as human beings and not just the interests of your team or, or or anything else, because our number one of our number one goals, and Coach Mosley, you know this, is retention. You got to keep kids on campus. You got to keep you got to keep the kids in the uh, keep kids here. So whenever, but whenever you have a kid facing life changing incidents like that, or life changing events like that, you have to do what's best for the kid. So um, I think as long as you're going back to our very first point, as long as you're authentic and you really, really weigh all the options, you really don't have to worry about guys taking advantage of you. And, and when they do, when they try to, you can kind of sniff it out. It's, it's, it, I mean, we've all been 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. You, you know when somebody's blowing smoke up your up, you know what I mean? And just telling you, hey, coach, I need to do this or I need to do that. Oh, okay, well, we'll be out by 7.30. You know, you can figure it out between 7.30 this morning and 7.30 tonight, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so. So as you are just talk, talking about retention and, and ultimately really knowing what the player needs and, and being able to, you know, be be that resource, being being able to be that that, that mentor. I, I want to take a slight pivot and, and I want to ask you all um, with with both of you all being, you know, seasoned African-American males and, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, ha having having your fair share of life experiences just with seeing the things that we've seen with, with social justice and seeing that we've seen just the stuff we've seen happen across the world. Like how, how do you have these conversations with, with, with your players and how do you, what, what does that, what does that look like? Because I know there's a lot of coaches out there who are struggling trying to figure out how to have that conversation, but I want to, I want to kick it. I want to kick coach Mosley. I'm, I'm kicking yeah. I'm kick you first. No, yeah. No pressure. No pressure. Well, well, for me, what I see happening and what I feel personally, it feels like the, now the conversation, and this is just my personal opinion, the conversation needs to be had. But I mean, sometimes when you overdo the conversation, you just over, just over pushing that, then it, 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 it brings up resentment. And right now I feel like we are being resented because we're forcing that message. And that's, that's fine that, that we hear it, that we have a voice and that is being emphasized that, Hey, we need equality. We need blah, 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 black lives matter. All, you know what? That's that we get it. We get it. I think now we need to focus on our hearts and I'm not talking about, we need to focus on the hearts of, of all human beings and we need to fix our hearts. Um, my mission my purpose is uh, fixing our hearts as the way uh, Christ, you know, Christ, he fixed my heart. And that that's me. That's my, in regards to my faith, because that that's the only way it's going to be fixed. Because if you work out this solution of how to resolve the issues of the, whatever you want to say, the suppressed or oppressed black people, uh, we finally fix that solution. We finally get the jobs we need. We finally get you know, no racism for all it is, it's going to, that, that heart issue is going to just go to someone else. So now you got an Asian issue. Now it's a Brown issue. Now it's a, a issue against the, the rich versus the poor. Now it's always going to be somebody against somebody. So the goal for me has always been talking about the hearts of man. And I kind of lead into that with my players. Yeah. We'll talk about that a little bit, but I think if we go that route, that covers everything. You know what I'm saying? Because we can fix the, okay, black empowerment, be strong, be tough, represent your race. Uh, black lives matter. Everybody needs to support us and help us. Uh, it's not right what they do to us. You know what? It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to, and, and my, my spirit is very sensitive. I think 
And my spirit feels like that all of a sudden we're being looked at as victims. You know what I'm saying? It feels like we're victims. Well, no, we, we need to be treated this way. We've been treated wrong for so long. We need to be the focus of the conversation. Absolutely, there has to be a conversation, but it feels like a victim. We either, we're being, I, I feel like a victim now, okay? Which in some ways you are, but I don't want that title as a victim. And then those who should support it, they're starting, it starts to feel like resentment. They're resenting that, okay, we get it. We get it. Um, and I know some people will have different, you know, they'll, they'll feel different about that. But I just feel like, let's move on and let's fix our hearts. You know, let's fix our hearts. And if our heart is fixed, then we'll treat, we'll treat each other right. So I'm going after the heart, man. I'm not going after the skin color. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going after to, to represent the skin. I'm going after a heart change. If we can change the hearts of, of man, then, then they'll see color differently. Then they'll see race differently. Then they'll see, uh, I need to treat uh, a female better. If I fix my heart, because guess what? We have this conversation of black, about fixing the black lives thing. But then guess what? We still have a problem with maybe how we treat uh, females. Um, now we have a problem with the way how we treat those who decide to, to you know, LGTB, you know, that community, transgender. You know, we need to fix our hearts on how we, how we approach them. You know, wh whether, what do we think is right or wrong, how we approach and how uh, we see and how we love others. You know what I'm saying? Because if I just, if we just fix the black thing, yeah, you'll appreciate black people, but there's all these other groups that, that want to be recognized. And now we got to go, we got to figure out, okay, now let's do Asian history so that we can love them. Okay. Now let's go do the uh, Hispanic heritage so we can love them. Okay. Let's learn the history of this and learn the history of that. Let's learn the European history so that we can love them. No, Let's just fix our hearts and and all that stuff doesn't even matter, man. Let's 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 fix our hearts how Christ fixed my heart. And now I can go out and love because if I focus on the color, I'm a, I'm gonna not like some people because of what some people did to me and mm -hmm. or because of what what some people have done. I'm just not gonna like them. I'm not I'm gonna resent how they've been treated if we talk about that. But if we talk about a heart, now I got compassion and I got in trouble. For having compassion, I had compassion immediately for, you know, and it sounds wrong, but I've, I've looked at like, you know, yeah, I should speak up for my people, but George Floyd, he's gone and it was wrong. I looked at, at, at the, uh, the police officer, Derek, and I was just like, I said, man, his life is, well, yeah, well, that's what he gets. He killed him. But I'm like, man, think about his fat, think about his kids. His kids didn't do it. His wife, think about his whole lineage of family, the, what they have to go through. Well, that's what they get. That's what he deserves. You know what? Justice needs to be served, but there's a level of compassion. Think about when we do something, when I've done something with Christ, some of the things I've done, I should be in the same position. I should be locked up. I didn't get caught and Christ had the compassion for me. And so, yeah, there needs to be a level of justice for what happened. But there's got to be some compassion. You sinned, you got to serve justice for that. But at the same time, I got to have a heart and I want to see you come to Christ. So that that can, so that that can come out of you so that you want, you won't sit, maybe sit on his neck that you'll, you'll remember to have compassion, you know. And maybe, he, of course, he probably didn't mean, of course he didn't. He didn't meet me kill him. But if, if a, maybe if a level of heart of compassion was there a little bit more, maybe he would have felt, he would have felt George Floyd a little bit more. Like, I, I think I, in my spirit, I feel like this is wrong. But in his spirit at the moment, it didn't feel wrong at the moment. If it did, he would have let up maybe. So that's what I'm like, man, we got to fix his spirit, his heart. You know what I'm saying? It was, you know, we, t we take it as, oh, it was because it was black. Well, yeah, the, the maybe, but we just got to fix the heart. The heart would have maybe released him. Not, not the fact that if he felt better about black people, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't, it was his heart. If his heart felt was right, 
you know, yeah, maybe if it was a white person, he might have let up because it was a white. But if we fix the heart, that covers everything. It covers everybody, every race, everything. If we just fix the heart, instead of just fixing the black lives, fix the heart. And that that's the direction I'm going because I'll get angry. I'll get bitter at how I get treated and how it goes on in my life. And, and it's never going to end. So why don't we just fix the heart? Because, you know, I, that, that that's just where I'm at. Lead with love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lead, lead, lead with love. Coach Coleman. Yeah, that's, um, I, I, again, I agree with Coach there. I mean, I think it's it's definitely a hard issue. Um, one of the hardest things uh, to do, going back to your, your last question, is to talk about that in today's society because because of social media, you know, you, you have to address it. You, it's not something that you can just breeze by and um, and just keep keep on with the everyday uh, everyday minutia of life and just act like, not necessarily act like nothing's happened, but act like it's not a hot topic or something you have to talk about. But being in our situation, being in our position, you also have to be careful not to isolate people because you do have kids from other races and things like that on your team that you have to be sensitive of. Uh, I, I, I watch your documentary, Coach. I don't know if you do, but I I, <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got a couple of kids from other races and other backgrounds that you have to be sensitive of. But uh, mm -hmm. um, but well, the mission of our school is building leaders and uh, and and mentorship uh, through mentorship. So for us, um, just showing those kids, not only the kids, uh, black kids or or brown kids. We have we have Hispanic kids from South Texas. We have black kids from all over Texas. We have white kids from all over Texas. Not only showing the black kids, hey, you know, I, I saw what happened. I feel for you. You know, we, we've been treated in unjustly, but also showing them this is how you should act or this is how you could be to kind of avoid some of those things. Because I think a lot of times where as as black men, we 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 forget about that part of the equation which is to, to teach one, to teach each and every one of our guys or the kids that we come across, man, this is a standard you have to hold yourself accountable to so you aren't treated in such a way uh, or seen in such a way as a threat or whatever the situation may be. Um, because a lot of times uh, what we don't realize is our quote unquote culture can be threatening to people. So mm -hmm. if, if you're not aware of that, whether it be sagging pants, loud music, wave caps, all these things that you you deal with with kids walking on campus from day one. I, I talk to my guys all the time about judging a book by its cover. One of the illustrations I gave from the very first meeting we had with our guys as they were moving into campus was I, ha I actually had a book. I took the cover off and I asked them to tell me what the book was. And obviously none of them could. I put the cover back on. They took a stab at it. Obviously, their guess was a lot closer when they saw the cover than it was before they saw the cover. And like I tell those guys, whenever you're whenever you're meeting somebody for the first time, no different than our my best friend is uh, on campus is our women's coach. He's an older white male. No different if he were to walk in with uh, a white robe on and a, and a hood on, you know, and, and we're going to judge him automatically. That's the same thing when an older white person might see my guys with their pants hanging, with a wave cap on and a, and a, a white beater on. They, we see it as nothing, but they see it as threatening and as something else. And not saying you have to change who you are, you're still authentic to who you are, but you also have to be aware of, of how you're perceived. Uh, so being able to talk to our guys, a lot of times I, cho I choose to address it one-on-one. -on -one. When I'm pulling them in, I'm having that one-on-one -on -one conversation, getting to know them, making sure they, they don't feel isolated when you're talking to them about this thing as well as making sure that, again, those kids from other cultures and other backgrounds don't feel isolated when you're empathizing about this thing. So uh, being able to hold those conversations one on one and also figuring out ways to hold them within a group. Um, but uh, again, going back to your last saying, uh, I think that's what makes this generation such a tough generation, because these things have been going on forever. It's just now that you have social media, you, everybody has a platform to share. Everybody has a, a camera on site ready to go in their pocket, ready to go. Now we see that so it's so much more prevalent than it's ever been. And I, you know, where, co where coaches that coach me, coaches that probably coach John, probably, you know, only time you heard about it was if it was on the news or in the newspaper. And, that, and in those instances, the media was more controlled. Now I can walk right outside of the parking lot 
if I see something and I don't think it's right, I record it. And the only thing you're getting is my perception. And, and, and that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't realize as well. So uh, like John said, with, uh, with Derek in Derek's case, you know, you, you don't know what his thought was, but the easiest thing to say is he killed a black man because he doesn't like black men. Well, you don't know that. I mean, his, you know, uh, I, I, one of the most influential people in my life was my high school coach. He's a white guy, blonde hair, blue eyes, big old gold mustache, looks like he's a motorcycle cop. I love Coach, <laughs> I love Chris Dyer to death, man. He, he, he's, he was my dad when my dad couldn't be there. He was my mom when my mom couldn't be there. He calls me, checks on me every single day still to this day. But if he were to go out and run over a black kid in the streets today, everybody would say he did that as a hate crime. And that's not true. I know that's not true. He's got over hundreds and hundreds of black guys that he that he that he's raised since, you know, 14, 15 years old that would vouch for him on that same stage. So we can't always just group everybody in the same and just say, hey, they're doing this because they don't like it or, or vice versa. But I also think as coaches and as mentors, that's an important ingredient that we have to realize that we're sometimes we're not only the guy who teaches these kids how to act or how to dress or how to do this and the third. We're also the guy who might come across that white kid that needs a, a, a profound uh, black uh, um, character in his life to say not all black people are bad and not all black people are this or that. So. You, you, you always got to be be aware of the stage and 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 and, uh, and just uh, just what you have is the power that you have as a coach. With that, with that being said, with that being said, as a as a young man, and I'm going to say young man because because I, I know both of you are men's basketball coaches. So yeah, we we yeah. <laughs> Well, hold on. Let, let me get to the question now. Y'all know I'm about to say, let me get to the question. <laughs> I was going to say, as as young men come through your program, are they enter your institution? And then when they leave your institution, is it your job? Because, you know, I, I talk with a lot of people just on the student athlete development side. Is it your job to make sure that they're further developed for life? leaving your program right or or does or does a lot of this fall on you know like the academic side who, who whose hands does it whose hands does it fall into well you know what the 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 beauty of this the beauty of this basketball or sports in general is that you do have that carrot and if you really are if you really have the intentions of helping uh young people and i love I love to see people have success. I love to see, you know, I love to, to, I love children. I love, you know, I love to help when I see a little bit of a, a lost sheep or a lost or, or a lost puppy or whatever. The beauty of the basketball is I can grab their attention because they want to play. I have the carrot of basketball. They want to play basketball. They want to move on. They want to transfer. And so I see all of a few deficiencies that's going to, cause them some harm in the future and the fun part is to be able to be relevant and and we talked about authenticity and to be able to share with them some nuggets and i'm gonna tell you something man i had a, an awesome father and he was he mentored even some young men that were in the community and he mentored my teammates he was a guy that the door was open and i was sharing he was cutting up potatoes and frying potatoes and the team will come over and eat after, you know, I live five minutes from a high school. So he was one of those, one of those fathers. And so I, I, I you know, I, I feel the need to kind of, you know, create that space as well, where we can bring them in and then share with them nuggets. Like, look, man, let me tell you something. It ain't nothing wrong with you. That's the culture. You can sag and like, like, uh, you know, like Dwight was saying, Hey, you can sag, you could do all that, but, if you want to appear less threatened so that more open, more doors open for you, then these are some things that you should change or you could change to help. You said you want to be a millionaire. Now you could be a millionaire with, you know, with, with tattoos up the neck, but you know, what can help you is if you can hold off on getting those, the tattoo and the, and all of this all on the face, <laughs> more doors will be open, right? Like you, you close a lot of doors. If, if you got tats all right here, 
So now you only got two doors. Well, maybe if you have no tats and you in good shape, and if you smile, guess what? Now that smile opens up five more doors. You know what I'm saying? You being in shape opens up another five doors. Uh, you having the education opens up another. Now you got more opportunities because of you You decided to say, hey, I'm going to conform. I'm not going to sell out, but let me conform so that I can open up more doors. So I do, shit, I do bear that burden. That is a burden that I carry because I know, uh, and here I am talking about the heart, but here I know as a uh, African-American that some doors are closed because some may look at my skin or because of what I, where I've come from or because, you know, there may be something they don't like about me. Um, but the, the more I can change some of those things and eliminate things like, okay, you can't say I'm not educated because I got four degrees now. You know, I covered that. The more things that you can cover, the better. And, and I think that, that I do take that responsibility because when they walk through the door, they don't know that. And I love to tell this story. I said, look, you're only cute right now. You're not going to be cute in five or 10 years. Your grandmama think you're cute. Your mama think you're cute. Everybody thinks you're cute. Your girlfriend, you think you're cute right now. In five years, I don't care how you edge up your hair, how good you look, how buff you are. You are not cute when you walk through that, that corporate office and you hand that resume. It's like, okay, how is this guy going to help me build my numbers? How is he going to help us build our company? Like, I don't care how buff you look. You're not cute anymore. You know, oh, you got your oh, little. AAU team you play for. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what AAU team or any of that. So, uh, and and it's fun to take them through that and say, look, man, none of that cute stuff matters. And you can use basketball to help them through that. Understand, like, bro, you're not cute anymore. I, I didn't see 100 dudes dunk like that. That dunk is not cute to me. Like, what's cute to me is if you show up every day and you show up with the willingness to compete at a high level. You can show up to study hall on time. If you come ready to go, if you come with a sm with not pouting, if you show leadership, you know all those qualities it's going to take to have success. Not, you know, the, don't I, you know? I'm not celebrating the almost. I'm not celebrating your, you know, how cute you look. No, because that's not going to matter. What's going to matter is how you function as a young man, or you know, in your space. Are you educated? Are you? Do you have, or can you articulate? And so I think I do share that. That I take that more than the basketball. Now I take that more than basketball. And and that's not for everybody. Some coaches, they, maybe they don't want to do that. For me, I feel it's a responsibility to, to uh, and if I get more African-American young men, of course, that's a special, even a more special place in my heart to say, look, man, the, the, the odds, it's some odds that are stacked against you. Honestly, so this is what you got to change if you want change to happen. Coach no. Dwight, Coach Dwight, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pass the mic. We're gonna pass the mic. I agree. I agree. I, um, it, it, it's it's crazy. My uh, our VP here at the school and myself, we were just having the same conversation, and he brought to my attention a book called Gen Z, where uh, in that book they talked about. Um, they they did a poll asking a group of young men, a young a group of young people. Who are the most influential people in their lives? And right, right behind their parents were their coaches. So, um, answering your question, I think it is. I think a part of that, a huge part of that, is our job. But I also think that we we teach those kids that every single day through basketball. Coach mentioned it uh, just a minute ago. Are you going to show up every single day? I mean, uh, a lot of people see my uh, our, our that brand feet on the wood that I'm pushing right now. The um, as you know, I, I, I post a picture of the shoes that I'm wearing that day or the picture of the guys are wearing that day or we we talk about the hot shoes. But the the thing that it really stands for feet on the woods really stands for. Are you there? You can't have your feet on the wood if you're not present. You can't have your feet on. The, you can't have your feet on the wood if you're not going hard. You can't have your feet on the wood if you're not taking advantage of those opportunities. So that's the number one thing you teach me. You got to be there. You got to be on time. You got to you realize that people are in the building are relying on you to show up every single day. Um, the uh, as far as where basketball teaches you that uh, it's we always talk about the little things in the game of basketball, whether it be communication, boxing out, running the floor, all those little things that you do throughout a game that helps you win the game. 
in contra and when you're comparing that to life, there's a lot of little things that you do in the in the daily uh, vigors of life that helps you win in life. If you're not setting your alarm to get up every day, if you're not getting the stuff out that you need the day before, if you're not meeting those deadlines the same way you got to be in help side, if you're not communicating with your bosses or your co-workers the same way you got to communicate with your teammates, if you're not willing to sacrifice your body the same way you got to sacrifice your time, if you're not willing to meet all those little things in, in everyday life, you won't win in the game of life. And just like in a basketball game, when the clock runs out, the clock runs out. You might get fired. You might die. Whatever the situation is, you got a certain amount of time that you got to get this stuff done. And if you don't get it done within that amount of time, you lose. Exact same thing in the game of basketball. You got a certain amount of time to check all these boxes. And the more boxes you check, the more likely you're going to be successful. Same thing in life. Same thing in life. Man, that, that, that's good. That's good. So, coaches, we're going to go ahead and get ready to wrap this thing up. But I want y'all to just just start thinking in your mind, like, what's the final thought you want to leave with, with the people? What's what's the final thought? What's the final thought? But uh, I, I just want to chime in here uh, and, and just really share that 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 everything that you all have have really shared today and every uh, experience that, that you all have have had. I, I've had similar experiences being from the player perspective, not necessarily from the coach perspective. But I, I want everybody out there listening just to understand at the end of the day, it's your life, right? Like it, it's your life and people very, very few or very seldomly will people be more invested into your life than you will be. You have to show up. You have to show people that you're serious about wanting to get to the next level, next phase of your life, whatever that looks like. And then more than likely you have people starting to chime in, adding direction, adding insight. So I just want to leave the people and leave the ballers out there with that and understand that it's your life. Take advantage of the opportunities that you have. Take advantage and leverage all the resources you can. Invest in people and in relationships. And it's going to take you all far. It's going to take you far. But now I want to go ahead and coach, coach, since, since, since you spoke last, Coach Cole, I'm, I'm kicking to you, Coach Mosley. What's mm -hmm. one, like, what's one nugget? That, that, that you just want to leave out there for, you know, for a young person who is on the brink, let, we'll say their freshman, sophomore year, right? And we know the transfer portal is a thing. We know all this other stuff, all these distractions all around. Just what, what's, what's a piece of advice you want to you give to this young person? Well, you know, uh, again, and I shared it before, you, you only cute for so long. And so all of these opportunities that you have, they're not going to always last. And that, as coach said, that time is eventually going to run out. And what, it, what have you put in during the time? You can't assume that this is time you're going to always have. Uh, I, I mentioned to my son, and he hurt his foot yesterday in his basketball game. And I mentioned to my son, hey, I'm going to do a workout today. And I said, well, you know what? Why don't you come do the workout? He chose not to. His foot was hurting. But there was an opportunity to come work out and work out with some college guys. And I said, because you know what? Friday, we're not working out. Saturday, we're not working out. Sunday, we're not working out. So you have to, when you have those opportunities, because you never know, you can't assume that those opportunities and those doors are going to be open. Well, I'll, I'll have another opportunity because you saw it. When the time runs out, the time runs out. I think you need to take advantage of, of what you have, the resources, the education, if you see somebody pouring into your life, uh, you need to grab hold of that and, and not let it go. Because as you get older, those doors, they become limited. And there's, of course, a few cases where, you know, something great happens and more doors open because something special happened. But you can't take that risk. I think you need to kind of all of the opportunities that you have, you need to take advantage of it. If you can get educated, your education paid for, don't take advantage get that education paid for, assume that the next person is not really, you know, you may not get a chance to get it taken care of. You don't, you know, the, the big thing with my parents was, well, son, right if you blow your knee out, you know, that was the thing our parents told us, Hey, you need to get your education. If you blow your knee out, then what are you going to fall back on? You know? Uh, and it still stands today. Uh, what are you going to fall back on creating all these other options as well? Not putting all your eggs in just, just basketball, but taking advantage of all the opportunities you have. Because, man, hey, you're not going to be cute in five years. I'm telling you, look at me. I'm not cute no more, man. 
you know what I'm saying? The cuteness, the 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 being able to the 40 inch vert is not gonna always last. You know, the hairline is not gonna last. Uh, you know, the six pack is not gonna always be there. But what is your foundation gonna be? It can't be off a six pack on your stomach. It can't be off the, the horse, you know, the jumper ain't gonna always fall. What do you have to fall? What does your foundation look like? So take those opportunities. You're not gonna be cute always. Coach, speak for yourself. I'm I'm still cute. Coach Coleman, what you got? <laughs> I, I think I lost my cuteness, but uh, uh my 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 final, I actually have a couple, um, if that's okay. Um Number one is improve your circle. Whenever you go into, uh, I always tell my guys, when you walk in college, everybody becomes somebody, you know, everybody always tell you, takes on this different persona persona that, that, that they were whenever they left their hometown or whatever it is. But I think if more guys try to improve their circle when they walk on the campus, uh, I mean, prime example is me getting this opportunity to speak to you guys, two high level guys. I mean, coach just mentioned he has four degrees. You've done two TED talks. I mean, I, I'm I'm the small fish in the room right now, man. So just be putting you surrounding yourself with guys that are going to challenge you and make you better. That's that's number one. Improve your circle. Um, I do. I take the same approach when I hire my assistant coaches. I I I only hire guys that are better than me. If 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 I if you're not better than me, then what are we doing? You know what I mean? I need somebody that's going to push me every day. Somebody that's going to make me get up to the office early every single day and say, I got to be better than coach. I got to, I got to learn something from coach or I got to get something from coach today. Uh, that, that, that's what I mean when I say improve your circle. Uh, coach Mitch touched on it a little bit. Shoot your shot. Those opportunities are there. Believe in yourself and, and grab them. Grab hold of them and run with them. Because like coach said, they're not always going to be there. Uh, we, I, I mentioned earlier what the true meaning of feet on the wood is. I mean, I don't have Sanooks, but every single time, <laughs> every single chance I get, man, I'm I'm making sure my feet are on the wood. And um, I always joke with my guys, man, my feet are on the wood, and I make sure I got a fresh pair on just so I look good while I'm doing it. But um, when I'm out there, man, I'm 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 grabbing whatever whatever blessing the, the Bible talks about giving us, uh, or we uh, the Lord's prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. And whatever blessing or whatever the peace that the Lord is giving you that day, grab it wholeheartedly and run with it. Make the most of of every single opportunity that you get. And then um, and then you just know that the harder you work at something, the luckier you're, you're going to get. The, the more you put into it, the more those opportunities are going to come. But when they do come, you got to grab them. You got to grab hold to them and run with them. I love it. I love it. And, and just in case y'all didn't know, uh, Sanook is going to be the official sponsor of this episode. They don't know. Yet, but, but they don't know. Sponsor this episode. Hey, I don't, I, don't, I don't know about Sanooks, man. We were ones here. Feet on the wood, coach. Feet on the he wood. He got the ones. <laughs> what a, yeah. Well, hey, the Sanooks is, it, they, it's it's my casual walk around. No, I'm putting something on. When I'm on the wood, man, I'm, I'm wearing some sneakers as well. So, because I, I got. Yeah, I got to be active, but the Sanooks is my hang around. They be like, Coach, what you wearing? I'm like, hey, man, you don't know, man. It's conservative black folk stuff. You know? yeah. so That's man, what I, I tell them. The way you run around and jump around in practice, there's no way you're doing that in Sanooks, man. No, I'm not doing that in Sanooks, man. Yeah. Oh man, that, that that that's too funny. That's too funny. Well, well, Coach Coleman and Coach Mosley, I, I definitely appreciate all the value that that you gentlemen came came through and you added today. Uh, this this episode de definitely uh, met my expectation. If, if if it didn't supersede it, so I, I want to just say uh, publicly, I told you all both privately. I want to tell you all both publicly that that I have the highest love of respect for for both of you all uh, and, and the work that you do. And just like I told you, Coach Mosley, you know I'm a, I'm a junior college guy. You know, I yeah. went, went through the went through the junior college process, so I know what that looks like. And and Coach Coleman, just as we've connected as well, you know, with, with our stories. So so thank you for for all that both of you all do and the way that you're pouring into men to ultimately affect the trajectory of their legacies. So thank you all both. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Most definitely. Most definitely. And to all the ballers out there, I want to encourage you all to DM D DM. Coach Coleman, DM Coach Mosley, even though the DMs probably are flooded anyway, but but mention them or something. Let them know you got value from this episode. You know, shout them out. And, you know, if there's any way to where you can support the program, support the program, you know, in any way, shape, or form. But I'm Jonathan Jones, and I want to encourage you, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just type in Jonathan Jones Speaks on YouTube. And this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.